So, now we will discuss drafting roller arrangement. In draw frame, the arrangement of the drafting rollers is very, very interesting. There are many machine manufacturers and if we study these machines made by different manufacturers, then we will find that the, the arrangement of the drafting rollers are quite different from each other. So, what are the different types of arrangement and why they are different from each other? We are going to discuss this point now. So, what is the guiding philosophy behind roller arrangement? First is smooth running of the rollers. Second thing is avoiding roller slip during drafting, slippage of the top rollers. Avoidance of roller lapping, we have discussed it in the previous lecture session. Maximum control over the movement of the fibers during drafting. We will also see that the movement of fibers within the drafting zone is very, very crucial in nature. Fibers which are little shorter than the distance between the two rollers, their movement is very, very important for us because they move in a very erratic manner and therefore, we must have control on their movement. You will know more about them as we go through the lecture. Making roller setting insensitive to small changes in fiber length or short fiber percentage in the feed sliver. And if there is a small change in fiber length, maybe by 2, 3 millimeters either on the higher side or lower side or if there is increase in short fiber percentage, the setting between the rollers should remain insensitive. So, that we do not need to stop the machine and reset the rollers, because this process of resetting is a very, very cumbersome and time consuming process and therefore, the lesser we do, the better it is. So, the arrangement has to be such that the frequency of change of the roller setting, whenever there is a small change in fiber length should be avoided as far as possible. Quick and simple adjustments of roller setting, if at all we have to do roller settings, then it should be quick and this will be simple to adjust. And ease of maintenance and cleaning. See the lot of fibers are being processed continuously and there will be lot of deposition of dust particles or spin finish in the case of synthetic fibers. So, the drafting zone, the rollers, the bearings, they become contaminated with lot of impurities with time. So, you have to clean them time to time and hence this maintenance and cleaning should be easy and the system should be ergonomically attractive. So, the operator who is going to work on it, you should not find too much difficulty in working on the machine. These are the various guiding philosophy for the arrangement of the rollers. Now, when you discuss about the roller arrangement, we first should know the what is the cause or what is the reason behind the generation of drafting irregularity. Because the purpose of the arrangement is to take care of this aspect. Therefore, some idea of the mechanism of generation of irregularity we should first have. So, we will discuss it in short and we will take it up it in more details later on. So, here you see there is a drafting zone consisting of two pair of rollers and 
there are three fibers shown here one black fibers b another one is blue fiber a and there is another fiber c what we see here the fiber b is gripped by the front roller and therefore this fiber is moving at the speed of front roller fiber a is gripped by the back pair of rollers so this fiber is moving at the speed of v0 that is back roller and there's a fiber c the orange fiber which has left the back roller nip but it is yet to reach the front roller nip so therefore the fiber c is in a floating state we call these fibers fibers like c within the drafting zone they are known as floating fibers because while passing from back roller nip to front roller nip in any drafting zone there is a time when this fiber is not controlled by neither back roller nor front roller and hence it is in a floating state we call it so what will be the speed of the fiber c in this situation speed of a is v0 because it is guided by back pair of roller speed of b is also fixed is moving at the speed of v1 so b is moving faster than a fiber c is not in contact with neither of the rollers but we are sure that this fiber must be moving at a speed which is in between v0 and v1 it will move at such a speed the upper bound and lower bound of the speeds are known to us that is it cannot be less than v0 nor cannot be more, more than v1 it has to be somewhere in between v0 and v1 and this situation will be there with many fiber c is a one typical fiber we are showing in this diagram therefore the fibers which are there in the drafting zone at any point of time we can divide the fibers into three groups one group which is which are held by the back roller and moving at the speed of v0 another fibers gripped by front roller and moving at the speed of v1 and another group of fibers which are similar to c they are all moving at a speed v which is less than v1 but more than v0 so these are the three groups of fibers which will be there at any point of time in a drafting zone now see the situation the floating fibers will be surrounded by both slow moving fibers and faster moving fibers so c is not alone there are many fibers similar to c there are many fibers similar to a there are many fibers similar to b so c type of fibers are always in contact with a type of fibers and b type of fibers the number of slow moving fibers reduces while faster moving fibers increases as the floating fiber approaches the front roller so c is traveling from back nip to front nip as it moves forward and forward its association with the neighboring fibers it is changing when it is close to back nip most of the fibers close to the back nip are moving at the speed of v0 but as the fiber c progresses towards the front nip the number of fibers surrounding c and also moving at the speed of v0 will reduce however the number of fibers surrounding c and moving at the speed of v1 will increase so while slow moving fibers will tend to carry the floating fibers at the speed of back roller 
the faster moving fibers will try to accelerate the fibers and pull it out. So, there is a tug of war on C. Some fibers will try to force it to move at the speed of V0 and there are many fibers which will try to pull it and accelerate it and these fibers are moving at the speed of V1. As a result, the movement of the short fibers within the drafting zone becomes erratic in nature, which leads to concentration of fiber mass in a haphazard way and thereby generation of mass irregularity. The diagram that you see below the drafting zone, you see the green line representing the profile of fibers moving at the speed of back roller V0 and the blue line is showing the profile of fibers within the drafting zone moving at speed V1. So, you see the if I keep a fiber in this zone, let us say the fiber is here. So, this is the C C dash indicates the back roller nib and E E dash indicates the front roller nib. So, as the fiber is close here, if I draw the same fiber C, suppose some fiber is here and then in this zone, you see the green line, if I draw a line from here. So, fibers moving at back roller speed are more in number than the fiber moving at front roller speed. But as the fiber progresses from here to there and then as you go to there, you see at this point, the number of faster moving fibers and number of slower moving fibers are exactly same, where the two lines are intersecting the green line and the blue line. So, the fiber C is here first position 1, then it goes to position 2, it goes to position 3. So, by the time it is going to position 3, its contact with faster moving fibers are more and therefore, closer to back nib, the fiber would move at the speed of back roller as it closer to the front nib it will try to move at the speed of front roller. But however, we are not sure at what speed it is actually moving. What can only happen is this that the speed has to remain in between V0 and V1 and therefore, it may move sometimes at a speed greater than V0, but less than V1, but what is that speed that we are not very sure about it. So, it moves in an erratic manner, we can say sometimes at a higher speed, sometimes at lesser speed and this movement is not a regular movement and this is a haphazard movement of such fibers and therefore, these fibers are going to accumulate at certain places and wherever they will accumulate that region is going to be thicker and therefore, it will change the mass variation and leading to what we call generation of mass irregularity. So, if this is the mechanism of generation of mass irregularity, then the roller has to be arranged in such a way that these fibers, especially the floating fibers or the fibers which are shorter than the nib to nib distance, these fibers should be made to move as far as possible at the speed of back pair of rollers till they reach the nib of front rollers. We can avoid the generation of mass irregularity provided the shorter fibers within the drafting zones are made to move at the speed of back roller till the front end of the short fiber reaches the nib of the front roller. So, such things if we can accomplish by our arrangement of drafting rollers, then the generation of irregularity will be less. Keeping this fact in mind, the 
arrangements of the rollers have been made. The first arrangement that we can see is a simple arrangement known as fold over four arrangement. So, what we see there are four pair of rollers, this is a very very traditional or conventional type of arrangements. So, there are top rollers and bottom rollers, four pairs and therefore, there are three drafting zone. The rollers are all in horizontal single plane. The axis of the delivered can and the nip line are perpendicular to each other. Now, if the drafted wave moves out in the direction of the arrow, the can is always placed at the bottom and here are the kind of rollers. Therefore, the direction of delivery and the axis of the can if we see it makes an angle 90 degree. The slivers are subjected to a draft of 1.2, 1.7 and 2.9 in the three zones respectively. It is a three zone drafting system back, middle and front and the draft is progressively increasing 1.2, 1.7 and 2.9. Roller diameters are almost same as told there is an angle 90 degree between the axis of the can and the direction of delivery of the drafted fleece. Now, this was the type of arrangement which were there long ago. In this kind of arrangement there are two problems that you see. One is the middle top roller is prone to slippage. This was what was experienced. The middle top rollers that is which are there in the middle zone that is second and third roller. If I say this is my roller number 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4, then second and third top rollers are prone to slippage. That was one problem especially when we try to draft thicker slivers or do we want to increase the doubling and if the bulk of the material is more uh, in between the rollers then this problem were very acute. And the other problem is that the fleece has to turn by 90 degree to reach the calendar rollers and after that only it can be delivered within the can. So, there is a the, the path of the drafted material was such that it had to turn by 90 degree is a very large angle of turn. From there this arrangement was made. Now, what we see here it is known as 3 over 4 arrangement that basically means there are 3 top rollers and 4 bottom rollers. And what is new in it? A common top roller is placed on second and third bottom roller. So, you see here that second and third bottom rollers both are 22 mm diameter and we have placed one big top roller which is 45 mm diameter. Now, by doing so what we have achieved? One is that the middle drafting zone no more exist. We have basically two zone drafting, the front zone and the back zone. So, essentially it has become a two zone drafting system. And these two zones, so this is this is your front zone and this is back zone. The middle zone what we see that the top roller is resting on two bottom rollers and therefore, these two bottom rollers actually run at the same speed 
and therefore there is no draft between them and hence what we have done is that the two drafting zones front and back zones they are separated out by a neutral zone where there is no draft draft is close to one that is the advantage that we get that the two drafting zones the main drafting zone or front zone and the back zone they have been separated out from each other by a neutral zone and by having done this the problem of roller slippage was avoided because this will ensure that the drafting force in the back and front zone remains always more than the middle zone because when you study in more details about the roller slippage we will find the slippage used to happen because imbalances in the drafting force in the two neighboring zones if the if we can get rid of this imbalance in the drafting force then there is a possibility that we will be able to get rid of the slip of the top rollers there is too much of you no know, uh, difference in the forces the sum and that used to we will discuss in more details in some other lecture, but this one what is the disadvantage? This is not suitable for shorter cotton as the middle top roller nape moves backward. See middle top roller nape if you see it here this nape is here and therefore the distance from front nape to this nape has increased. Similarly, the distance between the back nape to the middle nape has also increased. So, nape to nape distance is more than what we what we will achieve if we keep the top roller exactly on the top of the bottom rollers and hence this is not suitable for shorter varieties of cotton that is the only uh, disadvantage with this system. From there another type of arrangement was thought of and this is known as 3 over 3 arrangement that is there are 3 bottom rollers and there are 3 top rollers. Feature is the front bottom roller is quite large 51 millimeter in diameter and there is one additional thing that we see here that is the pressure bar which is shown here it has been placed in the front zone that is the other part that we see here this is the difference. So, frequent lapping of the front rollers by the drafted wave can be reduced by employing a large diameter front roller as was told to you earlier that when you use a larger diameter roller there is a possibility of reduction in roller lapping because the curvature of the rollers is much less and hence we can avoid lapping tendency. So, that was the purpose why a bigger diameter roller was placed at the bottom. The advantage is rotational speed of the front bottom rollers reduces substantially to avoid vibration free running and the pressure bar is something new which has been introduced. The pressure bars improve the guidance of the short fibers in the front zone by deflecting the drafted strand downwards and thereby restraining the floating fibers from accelerating out of turn. What happens is this that in the front zone when the fibers are moving as has been told that the shorter fibers have a tendency to move out of turn they move in an erratic manner. So, we have to have some control we have to exercise on them and this control can be exercised by having a kind of bar which we place the bar is going to deflect the fiber path. So, there will be some force which will be acting on the fibers and this force will increase the friction between the fibers and therefore, will not allow 
the shorter fibers to accelerate out of turn, a frictional restraint is imposed on them and they are not allowed to get accelerated even though there is a pull on some of them by the fibers which are running at the speed of front roller. Thereby having a pressure bar has the advantage in terms of reducing the mass irregularity in the drafted product. The next arrangement is 4 over 3 arrangement. In the 4 over 3 arrangement, there are 4 top rollers and there are 3 bottom rollers. And if we see here that the roller nibs are at different planes, this is one feature. Two top rollers on front bottom rollers, that is something which is new in this case that on the front bottom roller, instead of one roller, we have two rollers. The additional top roller ensures drafted wave remain pressed against the roller surface and follow its curvature. And the other top roller, it changes the delivery directions. The delivery roller nib is inclined now at an angle which is less than 90 degree. It has been shown in the diagram that if we see the delivery direction of the drop to product and the axis of the can, we see this angle is much less than 90 degree and it ensures minimum departure from the natural path while going into the can coil or tube and hence when the speed is more this kind of arrangement will make the fibers to directly enter the coil or tube the turning angle is much less and there is a possibility that if at all there is a chance of curling of the wave when they are met to turn by 90 degree that possibility will be less and hence the there will be improvement in the regularity of the sliver. So, this advantage we get by having the top rollers, two top rollers. So, the two top rollers have two different purposes. One is to deflect the fiber path, the other one is to adjust the setting. We still have a pressure bar here the purpose is same as discussed earlier. So, this is another type of arrangement which is also popular with some machine manufacturer. Then we go to another type of arrangement 5 over 4 arrangement. So, from the name itself one can say that there are 5 top rollers and there are 4 bottom rollers. If you can count you can also see there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 top rollers are there and there are 2 bottom rollers. And what is the distinctive feature here? One is the 2 bottom rollers are very large in diameter, 90 mm diameter. Such big diameter rollers have not been used by other manufacturer. And the other thing we see here that in the entire no, the arrangement of rollers, though there are so many rollers, the actual number of zones of drafting, there are only two. One is the main zone and the other one the brake draft zone. In the main zone, the pressure bar is still there. So, pressure bar is very, very beneficial. The reason has already been explained. The front rollers that is which is 20 mm in diameter and the other one which is roller number 5, they are almost vertically placed. And this will basically mean that when this machine runs at very high speed, the drafted wave will directly go into the fleece funnel and from there to the trumpet and from there directly into the sliver because the can is placed right below the machine. So, the angle between the axis of the can and the direction of delivery is almost 0 now and therefore, 
the possibilities of turning of the wave is not there. When the speed is very high, then the turning angle becomes more and more important. So, and all the, the, if you see the big rollers have a large surface area and these surface of the rollers are also used for guidance of the shorter fibers. Uh, therefore, uh, the big rollers sometimes help because it owns surface and also act to, uh, as a, a kind of guidance gives guidance to the shorter variety of fibers when they move to the drafting zone. So, part of the surface of large diameter rollers are used to convey the fibers in the drop zone. Wrapping around the surfaces ensures intimate contact and thereby proper guidance of the fibers. So, when the fibers are made to follow the curvature of the rollers, then there is some amount of wrap the fibers will be always under tension and because of this wrap, there is going to be some pressure which will be acting on them. So, the guidance that the fibers will receive will be much better if we make the path, we make the fiber path curved instead of a perfect plane path. And hence, the rollers are arranged in a zigzag manner so that the uh, curved path can be created. From there, the arrangement of the rollers are now over. The only point now to discuss is loading of top drafting rollers. How to load the top drafting rollers? That is, we have to have some amount of pressure on the rollers. The pressure on the top rollers is applied mainly by spring or by pneumatic systems or by magnetic means. There are three mechanisms by which the pressure is created on the top rolls. In the case of spring, coiled compression springs are generally used. The extent of the spring compression changes slowly over time due to change in spring stiffness. That is the only negative aspect of the spring that a machine is going to work 24 7, it is going to stay with the company for 10 15 years. What happened? With time, the spring constant changes and when the spring constant changes, the pressure will also change. So, with time, this is the difficulty with the coiled springs, but in the spring loading, the load is always constant. We can only vary the load by changing the compression of the spring, but the stiffness of the spring may change with time. That is the only uh, negative aspect with the coil spring. The other one is pneumatic loading. Pneumatic load is applied using hooks and pressure hoses. Pressure hooks are connected to a compressor, which holds compressed air at a predetermined pressure. So, we must have a compressor and the compressor is connected by some pipes and pressure hoses and the pneumatic pressure is then applied on the top rollers. So, pneumatic loading has a wide flexibility of adjustment. We can quickly modify the load on the top rollers by adjusting the pneumatic pressure. So, this adjustment part becomes very, very fast. The demerit is pneumatic loading is sensitive to the variation in, compress, in compressed air pressure. So, if there is a leakage of air from somewhere, then the pressure may drop and uh, any change in pressure drop will very quickly make a difference in the load on the top rollers. So, this is the only uh, negative aspect. Otherwise, most of the machines today are working with pneumatic loading. So, with this, we complete today's discussion and thank you.